Hello, Shin, my friends, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. Go for Gracie! Go for Gracie! She's the best little skipper in the land! Go for Gracie! Go for Gracie! Won't you please give this little girl a hand? Starring George Burns and Heinz Honey, Gracie Allen, with Frank Parker, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. A hundred million strong, that's right, you can't go wrong. Thank you, thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> what, uh, what are you laughing at? This is a comedy program, isn't it? That's right. Well? <laughs> but Gracie, Gracie, the audience is supposed to laugh. Oh. Oh, well, then do me a favor and laugh, folks. <laughs> come on, a little louder. <laughs> oh, come on, let's scream, everybody. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you know, we can only find a joke that sits that laugh and have something. You said it. <laughs> come in. Burns and Allen program? Yes. <laughs> what, uh... What are you laughing at? I was a little late getting here. <laughs> well, that takes care of the first joke. Yeah. Why, George, you look like a breath of spring. That's a beautiful serge suit you have on. Well, thanks. You look like a picture. Really? Yes, the shining hour. <laughs> uh, well, I get compliments on this suit wherever I go. And I've worn it out in a lot of places. Yeah, I can see the places. <laughs> You can even ask Frank Parker. I'm considered a very smart dresser. Isn't that right, Frankie? That's right. There you are. To dress on $10 a year, you've got to be smart. <laughs> How did I get into this mess? By walking up two flights. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Hey, George, what do you do with your old clothes? He wears them. This happens to be an English import. Say, it does look a little like an Eaton jacket. Eaton? What Eaton? Moth Eaton. <laughs> Go, go away. Say, George, do you know what your suit really looks like? What? It looks like it's going steady with Bing Crosby shirt. <laughs> well, well, I really resent that because Crosby shirt is really from Dixie. Ah, uh-huh. George, stop worrying. A suit like that is nothing to sneeze in and furthermore... Quiet, it's... quiet. Let's talk about something else. All right. But don't ask me about my campaign. Believe me, I won't. I've been so busy with my campaign, I haven't even had time to be elected. Mm, but we're not going to talk about it. No, I'm not even going to think about it. No, good, good. If I think about it, I'll talk about it. Mm. And I hate to talk about anything I've got to think about. You're telling me... Uh... The more I think about it, the matter I get. Imagine asking the next president of the United States to pay cash for a thing like that. Pay cash? Yes. They wouldn't even take the Supreme Court as a credit reference. Well, who, uh... Who, who wanted this cash? The conductor on the bus. <laughs> It was probably a Hoover man. Mm, I was on government business, too. Government business? Yes, I was on my way down to get my daddy's relief check. <laughs> Why doesn't your daddy get his own relief check? He can't. He's picketing the Swiss embassy. He's picketing the Swiss embassy? Yes. That Swiss cheese gives him hiccups. Well, that wouldn't happen if we ran the, uh, the hole through a, a meat grinder. <laughs> and that Swiss right, yeah. hole. <laughs> okay, see? Look what I've got for you. Why, Ray Noble! <laughs> yes, I saw it in the window, and it just seemed to be the real you. Oh, thanks. I'll unwrap it. Oh, Ray. Well, what is it? Why, Ray, you shouldn't have done it. But it's just the thing I wanted. I, I was born in June, so it's simply perfect. Well, what is it? Double gum. <laughs> Ray, how did you happen to pick that out? Well, so, oh, boy, I've been around. I know women. <laughs> what did it cost you? It cost me $46, and I got it at Magnum. Well, I, I, I just didn't know how to thank you, Ray, but I'll certainly cheer it next to my heart. This isn't a romance. This is a contortionist act. Oh, Gracie, I'm going over there to write a poem about you. Under the spreading chestnut tree? No, under the piano. <laughs> well, so long, fellow. Come in. Remember me, Mr. Boynes? I'm the tailor. Oh, yes, I remember. Yes, of course. I was listening on your broadcast, and I heard them making comical remarks about your suit, and it hurts me. Because the suit cost $125. See, wise guys, and you thought I was cheap. Go ahead, Adrian. Tell them about the other suit that cost $125. <laughs> Thank you, yes. And an overcoat he bought for $150. There you are. He bought two suits and an overcoat for $410. This was two years ago. Hmm. And I've yet to see a nickel. <laughs> Get out of here before I kick you out. 
You and who else? The door is closed. <laughs> what am I, a genius? <laughs> Will you get out of here? See, George, if you didn't want to pay him, you could have given him one of your checks. Oh, yeah? I paid for those clothes two years ago. Hello. You should live so. <laughs> That's the last time I'll ever get a suit from him. You said it. Mm. Gracie, cheap. I'm not cheap. Didn't I take you to Cyril's restaurant the other night? Uh-huh. Well, what do you think that cost? Oh, $30,000 without the awning in front. <laughs> that pheasant, wild rice, on beef salad, crepe Suzettes. All that food went into a pretty little figure. Oh, well, thanks. And I've got a neat little face, too. <laughs> oh, don't worry, George. You can get credit any place. Why, everybody says you've got an honest face. Oh, thanks, Mickey. Everybody that looks at you says, Honest, is that a face? <laughs> I'd just as soon not hear about my face or my suit. No. And I'm not going to mention my presidential campaign either. Well, good. And on the top of all my campaign worries, in the middle of the night, my mother gave out the biggest scream you ever heard. What happened? What happened? Her feet turned black. Turned black? What did you do? What did we do? We sent for a doctor. What did the doctor do? He just took off her stockings and we all went back to sleep again. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Maybe you've got spring fever these days. You'd probably like to play hooky from washing the dishes. No one knows better than you how dishwater makes your hands feel so puffy and dry. But listen, the moment you finish the dishes, give your hands the creamy comfort of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Hands is so nice and fragrant, it feels good and soothing to tender hands. It's the extra creamy, extra softening emulsion that contains two extra vitamins, A and D. You know what? Every creamy drop of Heinz goes right to work, helping to ease away that harsh, chapped look, coaxing back a lovable, smooth feeling. Treat your hands to Heinz Honey and Almond Cream every day to help keep them soft and thrilling in spite of rough household jobs. You can smooth Heinz on your hands as you work, you know. It isn't a bit sticky. In fact, thousands of women say they love Heinz as a powder base, too. It goes on so smoothly and helps your powder cling lightly with a soft, youthful-looking bloom. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at your favorite toilet goods counter in several convenient sizes. Start using Heinz, H-I-N-D-S, tonight for soft, romantic, kissable hands. Now, Frank Parker. Thanks, Drew. From the musical production, The King Steps Out... I'm going to sing Stars in My Eyes, written by Fritz Kreisler and Dorothy Field. My song has wings, eternal springs, no longer a dream. My cheeks are glow, emotions flow, like sunlight on a stream. My step is gay along my way. The roses bloom at my feet. My love's arranged, my being's changed. My life is now complete. Everybody, 
Hey, I forgot to tell you that at my convention in Omaha, the women are wearing old-fashioned calico dresses, and the men are wearing suits like they wore back in 1870. But, Gracie, where can I get a suit like that? Oh, George, lend them the suit you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an 1870 suit. Oh, don't answer it, Taylor. <laughs> don't I know? Uh, and another thing, don't forget, you boys have to grow big for the Omaha convention. Is it compulsory? No, it's Apple. <laughs> Apple? Yeah. What's apple? The pie I had last night. Gracie, the whole thing doesn't fit. Well, that's what you get for walking up two flights. Stop with that suit. Say, Gracie, if I raise the beard, it'll cover my personality. Is that bad? No, it's apple. <laughs> Better get out of here. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If it wasn't for a beard, my aunt wouldn't be able to keep my uncle home night. What does that got to do with it? Well, she winds his beard up in a clothes ringer and hides the handle. <laughs> This thing like that is infallible. No, it's Apple. Well, well, folks, we finally got a piece of plot in the show. Say, Ray, how is the poem coming? Oh, pretty well, Gracie. I'll read what I've got written so far. Uh, the title is Spring is to Sing, But I Sigh, Oh My. Oh, that's beautiful, Ray. Isn't it? Yes, nice title for a seed catalog. <laughs> well, here's the poem. A day in spring is like a rose, and a rose is like a honeybee. And a bee can sing you with his nose, but only God can make a tree. <laughs> Is, uh, is that all? Oh, no, no. Oh, there's more. Yes. yes. A, a tree is like the stars on high, except it's in the ground. And stars are like your bluish eyes, except your eyes are brown. <laughs> Look, Ray, where are you trying to go with this? Well, old boy, I'm trying to get I Love You, Gracie, into the poem, but I can't seem to make it rhyme. That must be difficult. No, it's that. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Say, George, the next time I see Shakespeare, I'll tell him about Ray Noble's talent. Mm. This may surprise you, but he's dead. So is Shakespeare. <laughs> well, that's a nice TL for Ray. Hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, Bubbles. Did you get the plane tickets for Dallas? Yes, and did you hear the good news? No. I just got an offer from the group theater in New York. The group theater? Oh, what do they want you to play? The group. <laughs> the group. Plane tickets? What are they for? Where are you going? Oh, oh, this Friday I'm flying to Dallas to make a speech at the Variety Club get-together. Well, Gracie, I'm sorry, but they won't let you take your kangaroo Laura on the plane. Oh, isn't that too bad? And she had a bag all packed. <laughs> Dallas will certainly be disappointed. Oh, no, they won't, George. I'm taking you. Well, thank you. Why don't you take Bubbles with you to Dallas? I can't go. I've got to make a guest appearance on a radio program. What program? Me, the people. <laughs> Me, the people. Yes. Either well, that I... or hippie lobby. <laughs> I finally have like one that, line Gracie. and they tried to kill it. <laughs> I've got to finish that typing. Oh, oh, did she go? Oh, oh, right. Well, you're go gone. On. You're go gone. On. Go already. <laughs> oh, you should have been over the house the other night. <laughs> Bubbles had a date with Don Wilson. And you should have seen the three of them when they went out together. <laughs> there was more excitement. <laughs> the three of them went out? Bubbles down in the front of the house. <laughs> Those kids really go places and through things. Say, so George, I must tell you this. It's very amusing. Well, Truman, we can use something like that on the program. Yeah. Well, well the other night at the party, yes. I got up and told a very funny story. Uh-huh. Where the guests surprised when I didn't mention Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. You didn't mention No. <laughs> and when I got to the punchline of the story, it really knocked them for a loop. Because I didn't say a word about how Heinz Honey and Almond Cream will make rough red hands smooth, white, and soft, and thrilling to touch. I see. And where was this party? At the sponsor's house. Mm. Uh, well, the next time you tell a story, don't mention the hand cream either. Oh, I won't, George. That would kill the joke. And you're just the guy who can do it, too. <laughs> now, George, is that nice? No, no Apple, I finally got it. <laughs> Dr. Cyclops in the house. Oh, Gracie, I've rewritten my poem, and it's much better now. Good. Yes, listen. A robin has a breast of fiery red, and so has a bowl of chili. But chili has no feathers on its head, so it must feel rather silly. <laughs> oh, Ray, that's good. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it still doesn't rhyme with I love you, Gracie. No, George, but it's getting closer. Oh, I think oh, so. It certainly is. It's getting closer. Hello, I'm Sunny Gracie Allen speaking. Yes, I'm still running for president. What? Do I think farmers should be subsidized? Well, sure, if you can do it where it won't show. Gracie, will you guarantee that? No, I'll just have to take my word for it. Yes, take your own word for well, it. Well, uh, say that again, please. Oh, how would I take care of emergency relief? 
Well, I just filled more gas stations. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. And, and I think you're great presidential timber, too. Goodbye. Who was that? Charlie McCarthy. Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> You're such a big hit at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. It's a pleasure. Uh, Gracie, Gracie, I think I've got it. Well, I always knew you had it, but I didn't know where. <laughs> Ray, I just gave you a compliment. Oh, thanks, old boy. I'll smoke it later. But first, I-, I want Gracie to hear my poem. Yeah, but don't drop the ashes on the rug. Well, here it goes. If I could sing like a meadow lark and lay two eggs of blue, I'd rather be just a silkworm and knit two socks for you. <laughs> I'm inspired. Here, take my handkerchief. It is rather warm in here. <laughs> Ray, did that come out of uh, did that come out of your own head? Oh, rather. Sort of a wood carving. Well, I put it over. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Gracie, I just finished typing that speech. You're going to make a dollar. Already? Why, bubbles? It only took you three days. Well, you see, every time I got to the end of the line and heard the typewriter bell, I went out to lunch. No, no, no. Let me have it. Oh, and boys. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want you boys to tell me what you really think of the speech. We'll be glad to do it. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be back in Dallas. And I, um, the, oh, before I go any further, I want to announce that all promises in this speech are fictitious, and any similarities to persons living or like George Burns is purely coincidental. I'm not dead. You want to bet? <laughs> Give me odds. Wake up, America. Your country needs me. So pop out of bed. Mom out of bed. Yeah, too. everybody out of bed. <laughs> Time for all good men to come to the aid of a certain little party, if you know who I mean. We have an idea, yes. I think I know what you mean. Uh, it's our catching on week this yes. week. We know, yes. <laughs> this country is purely utilitarian. Are there any questions? Uh, Gracie, what does uh, utilitarian mean? Um, uh, are there any answers? <laughs> then I'll continue. Yeah, continue, continue. That'll be fine. Yes. It's uh, true that this is a baby's country, and every baby needs a change. Is that true? 
My political rivals say that what this country needs is more milk for the babies without delay. They say, let's take the bull by the horns. Well, that's foolish. <laughs> they can never get milk that way. I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'll think... I'll try it. I'll try so it. So, fellow yeah. voters, what this country needs is plenty. And even though it's impossible, I'll be glad to do it. Hello? Hooray! Thanks. <laughs> what was that? My friends, today millions of people are living who will never do it again. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Millions are being born for the first time. You've got something there, sister. And millions are doing nothing because it's the best offer they've had this week. Mm. <laughs> and when you listen to the radio every ten minutes, what do you hear? My way is the spry way. Quiet, Aunt <laughs> If you want an honest president, don't forget Gracie Allen on election day. I've never stolen a nickel, and all I want is a chance. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you know, a speech like that is even bigger than Don Wilson. Oh, you mean fatty? Yes, tiny fatty, <laughs> yes. That's what I mean. But Gracie, I loved your speech, especially where you mentioned Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. But Truman, she didn't mention Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. But I did, yeah. Well, oh, and a big boy, too. Well, how do you like it, Pinky? Well, Gracie, I don't think it fits. You don't? Well, what can you expect? He walked up two flights. Frank, just exactly. What's the matter with my suit? Well, I don't know, George. It's not the color because pale fudge looks good on you. <laughs> Thanks. Not the fit because, George, that's the way you're built. Well, yeah, that's nice. Not the style because those suits may come back again. Then, then what is it, Frank? Jealousy? No, it's Apple, and I'll see you later. Mm. <laughs> I think I'll go get myself run over. Oh, don't mind him, George. Frank, I think you've got a lot of nerve to say things like that. Someday you may be old and worn out like George's suit, too. Well, now I feel better. Whoa. Hello? Oh, how are you? It's Georgie Jessel. Georgie Jessel? Yeah. Yes, yes, I read it in the papers, Georgie, and congratulations. But I thought you were going to get married Friday. Oh, your wife made you wait till Saturday? Oh, there's no school Saturday. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, how do you like that? And I didn't think Jessel went to school. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Gracie, I made a new start with my poem, and I think it's much better now. Oh, good. Yeah, here it is. If I had the wings of a butterfly, I could flutter here and there. A butterfly never has to shave, for it has no whiskers anywhere. <laughs> Ray, if you're trying to rhyme, Gra Come in. Good evening, Miss Allen. Remember me? I was here last week. I'm the census enumerator. Oh, well, I'm glad to see you again. I just heard a choice bit of gossip, and I can't keep it to myself any longer. Well, I'm sorry, but we're not interested in other people's affairs. What they do is their own business. That a girl. Their secrets belong to them, and it's no concern of ours. What did you hear? <laughs> well, I don't know whether I should say anything or not, but that woman who lives around the corner from you... Oh, you mean Mrs. Hemingway, um... Uh, uh... Yes, Mrs. Hemingway Hemingway. Oh, it's so funny. I always forget the second name. <laughs> well, my dear, it seems... How far does this program go? To New York City. Good. I wouldn't want this to go any further. <laughs> well, I wish this didn't go any further. Mrs. Hemingway's husband. Which one? Which one? How many husbands has she got? George, don't be nosy. Go ahead, mister. Well, it seems that every time he goes to San Francisco... Yes? He doesn't go to San Francisco. No? No. <gasps> Isn't that just like a man? Yes. So tell me all about it. When he goes to San Francisco where he doesn't go, where does he go? Oakland. No. <laughs> really? Yes. Fortunately for Mrs. Hemingway, Sally Rand is a very good friend of the family. Well, that's a part of a new cat. What's going on here? I thought all census information was strictly confidential. Oh, poor Mrs. Hemingway. All the time that her husband is away, she does nothing but taste the floor. No. Yes, every night at the Coconut Grove. <laughs> you know his secretary, that beautiful little blonde? Oh, you mean that pretty one who always leaves lipstick on his collar? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's a wonderful typist. Yes, probably takes 120 kisses a minute. But it's too bad about her shorthand. What's the matter with her shorthand? Well, his wife's gloves won't fit her. <laughs> well, I've got to run along. Wait a minute. Before you go, uh, the house that the Hemingways live in, is that a one-story house or a two-story house? Please, Mr. Burns, how dare you? We census takers a pledge to secrecy. Good day. <laughs> Where did you meet him? Oh, isn't he cute? When I'm elected, I'm going to give him a much better job. Is that so? Yes, in the Secret Service. Yes. There's an undercover man, and he can stay there. At last, I've got the poem, Gracie. Here it is. 
When springtime knocks upon my soul, my heart sings like a joyous rabbit. But rabbits don't appreciate love, so then it's just another habit. Oh, There's no use going on. There's no way to make that rhyme. It's absolutely impossible to get a rhyme with birds and bees and skies of blue above you. You can write and write and write and write, but you'll never rhyme, Gracie, I love you. Yeah, but, well, I did it. You did it. <laughs> Once more, an opportunity for you to get a copy of Gracie's campaign song, Vote for Gracie. Everybody's humming it and wants it. Now, all you have to do is this. Listen. Just write your name and address on the back of a high-end honey and almond cream carton. Send one carton of the 25-cent size or one of the 50-cent size or one dollar size carton. Or, if you use the 10-cent size, send two cartons. Address your envelope to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. And say, when you buy your Heinz, you'll find out what an extra creamy lotion can do for your hands. Why, even one application of this fine, fragrant lotion helps make chapped hands feel softer, look smoother right away. Heinz contains two vitamins, two vitamins A and D. Use Heinz regularly for soft, thrilling honeymoon hands, the kind of hands he wants to hold. You can get Heinz honey and almond cream at any toilet goods counter. Get Heinz tonight and send the Heinz carton tomorrow sure to Gracie Allen for your copy of her dizzy campaign song, Vote for Gracie. Address your envelope to Gracie Allen... Hollywood, California. And now Gracie will sing Sweet Potato Piper. Oh, well, I'm dedicating my song to the members of the Axa Ben, who are holding their banquet in Omaha tonight. Oh, good. <laughs> Remember you, Bob, who played the tuba and made the rumba a popular beat. The peanut vendor was a solid sender, not to mention pickle or pea. Of course, you've heard of Sammy from Alabama, the old accordion man. Well, while we're on the subject, do you know what a begin began, do you? Music soothes the savage, that's a well-known phrase. But your heart becomes full of kettle drums when the sweet potato piper plays. Go on, throw your hat up, shout a few hoorays. Cause you can't hold back your jumping jack when the sweet potato piper plays. Though it's not a magic loop, there's a fascinating feat. It's not exactly beautiful. It's sort of like an, I don't know, I guess you call it cute. Sunbeams try new dances. Songbirds sound their rays. And the world joins in with the great big grin when the sweet potato piper plays. Now when you vote for Gracie, that's me. Here's what she okay. Cast another vote for the plane of no that the sweet potato piper plays. Comes inauguration. It will start a craze. Watch the diplomats picking up their staff when the sweet potato piper plays. At the presidential ball, we won't have the band at all. Now we'll simply have this silly type. A tootin' on the speaker and a piping on his pipe. All the boys in Congress soon will shout his praise. All the world joins in with the great big win when the sweet potato piper. The sweet potato piper plays. Don't forget, there are two Heinz preparations for your hands. One is the famous Heinz lotion that pours from the bottle. The other is the brand new, brand new Heinz hand cream in jars. Like the famous lotion itself, this new Heinz hand cream helps to give you softer, smoother hands in spite of housework or outdoor work. Good night. Good night. We'll all be back again next Wednesday night at the same time. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>